<laughs> All right, I think that's good. Hello, family, and welcome back to another video. I'm joined here by my girlfriend, Mackenzie. Say hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, my name is Evan. Some people call me Evo. And today, we are going to be shaving my head. <laughs> We're cutting it all. We're dropping the top. We're dropping the top, baby. So, you gonna lose a few pounds. Yeah, I might lose a few pounds. So this hair, right here that I have on my head, it's been growing like this for three years. Almost four. Yeah, almost four years, bro. And dang, almost a whole presidential term <laughs> or presidential, whatever you call it. Term. Yeah. So I've been growing this for three years, um, and in those three years, I've also been traveling. I feel like I have a lot of just like sentimental, like sentimental value, like all wrapped up in my hair. Um, a lot of things have like happened in these last three years, just moving to different countries and all that. Um, we're living in Spain, then we moved here to Thailand. Another reason why I'm cutting my hair is low key because of the barbers. I haven't found a good barber yet. I feel you weird just you standing here. You're just the barbers here are just like, they, they don't know how to work with black hair. Um, I've been cut by Moroccans, I've been cut by Spanish people, Thai people, and everybody. It's not good, bro. Like, I don't know if y'all see, but my hairline's been pushed back for almost three years. The second reason is that it's hot in Thailand. This hair holds a lot of heat. Maybe that's why I'm always sweating in these videos. You think? <laughs> it's not even that hot. It's really not that hot either. The last reason I guess would be more like spiritual. I guess like I feel like I hold like a lot of just like my past self in my hair. What I'm going through now is just like shedding all of my past self and I feel like this is like the big step in doing that. Like I've done that almost like with tattoos and things like that. When I want like a change in my life. I, I get like a tattoo and like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe this sounds crazy, but I just feel like, you know, it's like new beginnings, new, um, new perspectives, new outlooks on life. Letting go. Yeah. But with all that being said, bro, I know what you guys are thinking, bro. Like, do not let this white girl cut your hair. You have hereby been excommunicated from the African race. Hey, hey, I trust, I trust. That's all we can do is just trust. I didn't ask for this or want this. Yeah. Did you make that clear? It was my idea. It was his idea. So here we are. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. Everything's an adventure, bro. This is why we're here. I'm very nervous right now. <laughs> I'm very nervous, bro. This is this is like This feels big. It's just hair, but it feels big just because hair is such an important part of like I think our, our culture, but also just our sense of selves. Yeah, so. dang, put that well. Haircuts are men's way of like makeup. This is our form of makeup. Like your haircut can make or break your whole face. I'm nervous that if I cut this off, like I'm gonna be ugly. We already know what you look like without it though. That's true. Maybe that was the reason I started growing it, because I was ugly. No. With that being said, we are also going to do a Q&A during this video. I put on my Instagram, uh, a couple nights ago just asked me questions about anything in my life a lot of the questions are about like travel and traveling abroad things like that get a good look now how I look are you ready? no you ready to start? <laughs> no she's more nervous than I am I think which is crazy but this is the clipper we're going with today I think it'll get the job done. Here we go. <laughs> she's just gonna cut it off. She's not gonna try to fade it, none of that. Yeah, I'm just she's doing... going to get a haircut after this. Um, so, however it turns out, I'm here. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> <laughs> just get the first little swipe down. I told y'all these clippers are terrible. Oh, oh my gosh. Feel it. Oh, yeah. oh my there gosh. Go. Go. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
start with the first couple questions. Um, my first question is from one of my friends, Alec, from high school. He says, what is the best view in Thailand? And I'm assuming it's like of my experience so far here. And I would say the best view I've seen was probably Riley Beach um, in Krabi. And we just went like this past weekend. It was like one of the most. It's like what you think of when you, when you think of Thailand. It's like just <laughs> blue water and like pink sand and all that. It's really, it's really like I'm trying to talk normally right now, but look at this shit. It's like a chunk of my hair cut off. I can see your scalp. Oh my god. You all see it? This is nuts. Mm. Alright, let's keep going. Do you have anything about that? Like, what, what's your favorite view that you've seen in Thailand? Um, I think I would also say Riley Beach. Riley Beach is super, super beautiful. Yeah. Um, I think any of the places around, like, the national parks and, like, the islands are going to be probably maybe a little bit even more beautiful, but Riley Beach. So another question from, from my friend Kyle. He says, what is the most, most surprising event experienced while traveling abroad? I would probably say there's a lot of surprising things, bro. Maybe, maybe the time that I almost got arrested in Paris on New Year's Eve. That was like, <laughs> that was crazy. So we were, we were um, like at a bar. New Year's Eve night in Paris, super expensive. I don't recommend. It's just, it's just really expensive in Paris, regardless. But and I think as a foreigner, it's like hard to get into places that are like cool. Yeah, but especially in Paris. So we're chilling at this bar, and we we're just kind of like waiting for it to uh, be 12 midnight. And it's 12 midnight. We have our little kiss or whatever. We're like drinking our little drinky drinks. We're a little bit, we're a little bit, um, a little bit drunk at this point, right? And we walk out, and I just see like a dude, and like we just like start having a conversation, and we're just talking about whatever. I, don't, I really don't remember what exactly the nature of the conversation was. I think it was just about like how I'm American and traveling or whatever. And yeah, it was just a normal conversation. I leave, and that's it. So we're trying to go to like the subway, the metro system or whatever in Paris. And next thing I know, like I just feel like a group of men just following me. And they're all in plain clothes. So I don't know like, oh my God, this is crazy. They're all in plain clothes. So I don't know. I didn't know they were police officers at first, but they like tap me and they start asking me questions and all that. And they're like, where is it? Where is it? We know you have it. I'm like, what are you talking about? And apparently they thought I bought like drugs off this guy. And they're like, pat me down, pat me down, like, and they couldn't find anything. <laughs> I was just like, what, what is going on at this point? Um, so yeah, that was pretty unexpected. A little bit scary. Because in Paris, I don't know, but I feel like the police officers there are a little bit more. But yeah, most surprising event. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is crazy. This is like distracting. Like, <laughs> we can't even do the Q&A. Yeah. Oh. oh my god. I'm a different person. This is crazy. Look at oh that. God. Next question. What inspired you to leave the States and work abroad? Uh, from Firas, mi amigo de España de Granada. Well, what inspired me was I would just say a lot of things. In my life, I always knew that I wanted to travel and, and live in different countries, in countries, and like learn languages. And like I've always been fascinated with, with things like that. But I don't think it was really real until I guess COVID. The year before COVID, I had my little experience, three months experience living in Spain, and that opened my eyes. And then. We came back home and then everything was just like shut down. So during that time, like I kind of went through like a spiritual like awakening of sorts. And I just realized that there was more to life than, than kind of the path that was laid out for me. Like 
getting a job, working in like corporate America because that's pretty much the only thing I was looking at during that time. What's really important to me is like traveling and learning, learning about myself and, and going to different countries and meeting different people, having like different experiences. So um, for me, that's why I left the States to work abroad. Obviously, like living in the States, we have just that mentality of just like production, production, production. Who, who are you? Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? And I just didn't connect with that. Like, I connected with, I want to figure it out. Like, I want, I want to learn about myself first before I commit to, like, my whole life being ruled by a job. You want to go for the one guard? I'm changing the guards. Wait, can we just, like, have a moment to, like, look at your head right now? Oh, yeah, we should have a moment. So this is my head. I can feel it. Oh my gosh. You're doing a good job though, I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty good. Do you have anything to say about what inspired you to leave the States? Um, what inspired me? Kind of resonated with this idea of like, go to school, then go to university, then get a job, and like, that's your life. I just have never had clarity of what I wanted to do as a job. Yeah. And that felt really a lot like a weakness to me. <laughs> and then I, I don't know, I just had this like realization like, to know and I don't have to go down that path like I can travel and do something completely different like that's okay and that's possible also um which came after going abroad like I realized that possibility that there's just so much more out there that I really want to experience that I'm actually curious about so from there it was really easy to see I think the uncertainty for a lot of people is like the hardest part. It's just like not knowing what's next for you, especially especially in a world that, well, I guess in a society in the US where everybody seems to have it like figured out. So the next question, another question from Pidax, how do you choose a location to live in? That's a good question because obviously we chose to live in Spain and we chose to live in Thailand, but I think Spain kind of came just because it was the only thing, it was the only thing that we saw at the time that would be able to get us out of the States and be in a different country and also like be able to make a living there. Yeah, we had the experience living there before. Um, we knew we loved it, we knew we loved like the, the people and the food and um, just the culture of living in Spain. Like, relaxed lifestyle. The timeline kind of came out of nowhere. We got a text one day and the text said we need five teachers to move to Thailand like tomorrow. Like it was crazy. Like it, it was a really fast turnaround time and everything was happening um, just all at once very fast. But we decided to do it and I don't know I think when you make one big life decision like I think everything kind of works out more or less how you hoped, uh, depending on how flexible you are as a person, but it worked out and we're here. I mean, I think a lot of it is like, follow your curiosity. Yeah. Like, what, what are you curious about? Because in some way, it's like, kind of like a calling to you, your curiosity. Yeah. So like, just following what you're already kind of interested in, where you see yourself wanting to explore. Like, if, if this opportunity came, say like the one that came from Thailand and it was for a country that we didn't think about traveling already to begin with and hadn't really considered on our bucket list I guess you could say. I don't know necessarily if we would have gone. Like it's not to say like you have to just go anywhere and like just settle and be like okay. Yeah. This I is the opportunity I'm gonna go here. No, but stay true to like who you what are. Kudas also says, when or how do you know it's time to leave? That's a really good question. That is probably one of the most important questions. Well, actually, is that asking like leave the United States or leave forever? I think leave like a country, like leave a place. For, for us, for example, how do we know when to leave? Spain. I think I knew because it just wasn't like, I guess I don't want to say like exciting. Like Spain is so beautiful and fun and amazing, has so much to offer, but I think for me, it didn't be 
feel like it was helping me grow anymore. Mm. Um, to a certain extent, I got a little bit like comfortable, and which there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't know, it just turned in to something that I wasn't like resonating with anymore. I think Spain just like it just has such a relaxed chill atmosphere, especially where we were living. We moved to the to the islands a couple months after I started like my YouTube channel. And I could just feel myself like not really taking the YouTube like seriously. And I would always just feel guilty about that. Like why why am I choosing like other activities over pursuing something that I'm curious about, like you said earlier, and that I'm truly interested in. And I feel like being here in Thailand it's, it's kind of pushed me to like kind of create a schedule for myself of uploading and just like taking it seriously. So I think that's what, that's how you know when to leave if you're not if you're not receiving that growth. I think you just when it doesn't feel like it's serving you. Yeah. The place that you're in, the environment. And that's what environment is good. Alright, next question is from Zaria. How has the language barrier impacted your experience? Being here in Thailand, like obviously, we we don't live in a in an area that's really touristy, so a lot of the times we can't rely on our English. We have to use like Google Translate. Or we have to use like gestures, like gestures. Gestures. Ge it's gestures. No, it's gestures. It's gestures. What is it? It's in the comments gestures. below, is it gestures or gestures? It's not even something that's debatable. It's gestures. But honestly, to me, I don't think it's been like really hard. Uh, especially the fact because Thai people are just like so friendly and they like are just so willing to, to sit there and like let you try to explain yourself. <laughs> Some things like they just don't understand and you just go your separate ways and it's fine. Um, but yeah, the language barrier is definitely apparent. Definitely apparent here. Definitely here more so, like in Asia, because their languages. It's the tonal languages in Asia are so so different right. than anything like so Spanish being in Spain with Spanish it's just so much easier kind of to like adapt because the sounds are more familiar the alphabet like the writing the text is familiar yeah it's a whole it's different crazy. alphabet bro whole different thing yeah do you think it's I don't know if you can hear it, but it's literally pouring rain right now. It's like pouring down. Next question is from Keaton, my boy Keaton. What is the hardest part of traveling? The hardest part, I know the answer in my head. Um, this is a good question. The hardest part of traveling, I think, is like the loss that comes with it. Loss. When I say that, I mean like, you're choosing to step away from your comfort and that can include your home and like that to the country but also like your family and your friends. If you're making a choice to step away from people and things and the places that you do love um, to explore and grow but it is like a sacrifice to make and I think that that's like the hardest thing because from that like you're consistently moving around and for some people that's not really like Problem. It's not too hard, but you kind of lose a sense of home. Yeah. Yeah, that's very similar to what I was going to say. Like the hardest part for me is like just not being there, not being at home, and not being able to see like family and like my friends, and um, just like kind of like missing that closeness of like community. Because obviously, when you're traveling, like you can make your own communities, but if you're traveling kind of like we are, like going to different places, some of the connections like are just for one second and they're over. And then, yeah, and then you're not really like in contact with that person. Yeah, I would just say the hardest thing is missing your family. Obviously, we try our best to talk to our families like every like every moment we can. Um, but right now, living here in Thailand, it's harder more than ever, just because you have such a time difference. Like, my family is literally like 12 hours um, behind us. So like calling calling them and the schedule with that is just very difficult, but 
we try to make it work to the best of our abilities. Um, also, like with friends, bro, it's like, dang, it, traveling abroad can get like really lonely. It gets super lonely. Uh, luckily, I have like my best friend and my, my life partner here. Um, um, but yeah, like if you're a solo traveler, like it can get really hard. Um, but you just have to, your intention has to always be like your mission. Like you have to be intentional about traveling. Like, why am I doing this? It has to be defined. Or else you'll kind of like, you'll lose it. I don't know. You're like you're yeah. I want to end with one last question. Rank your top three favorite cities and least favorite cities. In the whole world? That we've traveled to. It's going to be difficult. It's a difficult question. Oh. So are we in cities or locations? Cities. We do cities. Wait, you go first. You go first. Probably Granada. Oh, I was going to say that. Um, we did live there, so like granted we definitely explored a lot there. But I think it's just such a beautiful place. There's so much culture. The architecture, like everything about it is just like so romantic and it's just everything you can look for. I really love it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put it out as my, my number one because that's that's what I like the first thing I thought of when they said favorite cities, I thought of Granada. It's a city that's just like has so much. Like you can like almost feel like the history and the culture of it walking the streets and it's just like such a charming place. Number two, number two is probably Paris, I would say. It's, it's Paris, bro, like, I don't know, Paris is like its own entity. Um, it, I think it's just like on another level of city, just because when you're walking through the streets, like you do feel like, wow, this is like so romantic, even if you're completely alone. Yeah, maybe especially when you're alone, just because you're like, it's like a fantasy, like you're just walking around romanticizing life. You can only really like have that nostalgia if you go to it and experience it. Obviously people say whatever they want about Paris. It's a dirty place, there's rats everywhere, which is true. true. But it's, it's beautiful. I'm not a single person, but I could see myself being there for like an extended period of time. Yeah. Like for like six months or something. Um, I hate how all these places are in Europe, but that's probably where we spend the most time. Yeah, we haven't had the chance to explore Asia yet, or yeah, really anywhere else around the world. So yeah. I think it will change definitely when we start traveling more. Um, but my third favorite city, I think, is Lisbon, Portugal. <laughs> it's another romantic city. All the cities I have in common are like just romantic vibes. Um, but Lisbon, I think is in a different category just because like aesthetically how it looks like it's 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 a really beautiful city like the red tiles on the on top of the buildings on the roofs the, the pastries and the good food and like the friendly people like what what stuck out to me most about Lisbon is like the, how friendly the people are like I was just literally Chilling just like on the sidewalk and some dude just randomly came up to me, started a conversation, talking about like whatever. I thought that was like, it really stood out to me. I honestly, see that's just like one that's like I forget sometimes. Where have <laughs> like, we been? Yeah, I'm just kind of on the spot. So I didn't even think about this, but it's a great place, but if we're going to go off of some place that I can see myself probably living for a little bit of time, that holds me wait for you, we'll probably answer it. But if I'm talking about a place that I think has so much to offer and explore as like a tourist, I think I think that. Yeah. I just think it was, I just found myself fascinated um, by the history, by like the vibes of it. And I guess like that's Scotland as a whole too. But I just think it was just, I had a great time there. I just found it really, found myself like feeling comfortable there. And also just like so curious. Yeah, I do think Edinburgh is definitely There's so a city. City. There's so much. Yeah, you should have. All right, so my um, camera ran out of memory space, so recording from my phone.
Um, so we were talking just like about Edinburgh and how it's a beautiful city and you should definitely go visit. Mm -hmm. Well, let's reflect how you feel. You just cut, or I just cut all of your hair off. Yeah. Like we can be, we can become so attached to like our identities and like, yeah, perceptions and our judgments of ourselves and especially physically. Uh, I think sometimes it, it, it's kind of crippling, like it kind of stunts your growth. And like me, just like cutting all my hair off is kind of me saying that like there's more growth. Like I'm kind of embracing just like the growth, and especially like with this channel because I don't know. Like it seemed like before I was a little bit scared of the responsibility of having. It's like the amount of work, time, and energy it takes to, to really like do the YouTube thing, but I feel like now like my mentality has completely changed and I really want to just like embody um, like what it means to be a person traveling um, the world, documenting that experience, sharing that like obviously with my girlfriend and in hopes to like inspire somebody else that those are the videos that help me on YouTube. He's showing his commitment to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's an experience to be able to, it's a privilege to be able to go into a different culture and spend time with the people and learn the language and do all that. Like, people don't really understand it like that. And I, I really want to show that there is other ways of Appreciate all the support so far. Um, 